Hey guys, welcome to Trendy DIY 29. Coming at you guys with a quick video. Um, as you guys can tell, I've had my um, pattern set up. Excuse me, um, you know, I just woke up. I had to get this done, but I was like, I know you guys are dying to see a DIY project, so I'm going to give you one. We're going to make this cute little clutch. Everybody heard of the envelope clutch? It's a really big thing. Um, everybody... Where is it? Celebrities, everybody alike. So what we're going to do is, but first we're going to start off, I hope you guys can see this good. Let me make sure I got everything in. Okay, there. Okay. So as you can see, we have our pattern laid out. Only thing I've done so far is I cut my pattern out. I finished, I figured out you know the dimensions of this pattern last night I cut it out I tested it out so it worked so I'm gonna tell you guys um, how to draw this out give me one second so I can get a sharpie so you guys can see okay so what I did was the first thing that I did is I started off with just a blank sheet of paper um, you're going to want a nice size um, sheet. I would say if you have like poster board, like one of those 99 cent poster boards, that will work really good. Or if you have like some of that craft paper, that will work really good. Or, of course, like I said, this paper is really good um, that you can get from Joann's. It already has one inch lines all over it that can help you. And anybody who has a problem with their pattern or their fabric slipping around I use these you can get these from good old-fashioned Home Depot there are washers and um, I think they're like 15 cent maybe 10 cent a piece versus going to Joann's you're gonna pay like 17 or 18 dollars for a four pack of weight so just keep this in mind get these washers they will definitely come in handy you don't have to worry about pinning everything down but back to this let me get my ruler My one favorite ruler, I'm not sure where it is, so I'm going to use this one. It's kind of intimidating, but this ruler is really good because it has, um, as you can tell, all the different tick marks on here. Um, you can get different, um, it has your different angles, your 45 degree angle, you know. Um, these are really good for like if you're going to be doing like uh, some type of like lapel works or darts. That's really, really good. This ruler is really good for that. Okay, so we're going to start off our first line that we're going to draw. So all of you guys have a sheet of paper in front of you, a large sheet of paper, okay? So our first line that we draw is going to be 12 inches long. So you're going to draw your line in 12 inches long. Alright guys, so right here, this first line, 12 inch. So you got that first line, is going to be 12 inches long, okay? So a, um, you're going to basically, we're going to be making a, an L shape real quick. So the bottom of our L is 12 inches. And the side of our L is going to be 7 inches, okay? So right here we have a 7 inch line. I'm sorry because I know that this is showing up backwards. So this is 7, this is 12. So you should have a line that's seven inches, a line that's seven inches tall, straight up and down, and then you want to have a line that's coming off of it horizontally. That's going to be twelve inches long. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that to the other two sides because we're just going to make a rectangle. So we want it to be the side. So if this side is seven, we're going to make this side of the rectangle seven, and this is twelve. So the top is going to be twelve. So let's draw in that twelve. Now, don't forget, guys, you can really change these measurements around based off of um, the size clutch that you want. This is going to make about an average size clutch. 
So here we go right here. That's 12 inches. So we have 12 inches, 12 inches, 7 inches. And then over here, we're going to draw in our line, which is 7 inches. So right now, we should have a rectangle on our page. Okay, so right now, as you guys can see, I have a rectangle that's 12 by 7, okay, all the way around, 7 inches, 7 inches, 12 and 12, okay. Next thing we're going to do is right off of this 7 inch, we're going to draw a line off the corner, okay, right where that 7, right where the 7 and the 12 inch um, meets, where it makes that right angle, we're going to go to that corner, that right angle, and we're going to extend out 2 inches, okay. So we're going to extend out two inches. Mine is already cut out, so I'm just marking this so you guys can see because I know it's hard to see the white paper. So that came out, we came out two inches where the seven and the 12 intersected at the right angle. We're going to go back up here at the top of our rectangle and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw two inches out. So right now we should have an additional two inch line coming out of our 12 inch line and an additional two inch line above it coming out. Okay. And we're going to do it to the other side. Whatever you do on one side, we're going to do on the other because our purse is going to be symmetrical. So I'm going to come out another two inches. That's two. I'm drawing on the pattern paper. Let me see if I can get it up. Okay. It's two. We come back. So we came out two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. Now, if you guys want, like I said, I'm thinking about doing kits. If you guys want, I could cut this out and I could send it to you guys, you know, for, a, of course, it's like a small fee. And I could actually send you guys this pattern, but it's very simple because we're starting off with just a rectangle. We're going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to go over it one more time because it could be a little bit tricky, but it's very it's very easy. It's just easier. It's easier once you see it. I want, I'm not sure how good of an angle you guys have. So once again, we, we started off with drawing a rectangle that's 12 inches long by 7 inches high, okay? So you're going to draw a rectangle. That's 12 by 7, okay? Then off the edge of each rectangle where you have those 7 inches lines, 7 inch lines on each side, you're going to extend 2 inches out of that 12 and you're going to extend 2 inches out. So you're going to make like two little 2 inch tabs. So a 2 inch line out of the 12, a 2 inch line out of the 12, 2 inch lines. You're just extending the 12 inch line by 2 inches on each side, okay? Then for our larger flap, you know the flap, the bigger ones, this is going to be the flap that you close your purse when you... Go forward, and this is going to be the flap that is going to connect to these two flaps. That is going to um, be the that's going to form the pouch where you hold your stuff. So, okay, to make our first flap, we might as well. It doesn't really matter which way you draw it. We're going to, since we're already on the extending the two inches, we're going to go here, and then we're going to extend this out four inches. Okay, so off of the two inches, you want to angle this in, and this is the one thing when I came up with this pattern, I noticed. There's really no real degree. Like, I can't say angle it in 20 degrees or 30 degrees. What I did was you just want to eyeball it and you just want to angle it in. Now, if you want your purse to meet like a point, then you can angle it in real sharp to make a point. Or if you wanted it to be rounded, you can angle it and then round it out on the end. Or, like me, I just squared it off and just, you know, said that I'm going to leave it flat. I think it will look a little bit elegant that way. And I'm going to do some that are completely triangular. So we're going to take this where our two inch line is and we're going to line up that corner where that two inch line is with the four inches on our ruler. And we're going to draw a four inch line extending off of that two inch line. So right now you see that we drew our 12 by 7 inch rectangle. Then we added two inches to each side of our two inches to both of our 12 inch lines on both sides. And then from that two inch line we extended a diagonal line four inches which is going to make us, um, which is going to make our um, pouch part that's going to hold our stuff. Then right here, we're going to do the same thing. 
extend this out four inches. And then I said, like I said, I just close this off. Like you can, you can do whatever end shape you want. Like right here, however you want your shape to be. I chose to go straight, but like I said, you could choose to, like if you wanted to, you could go like that and make it, you know, pointy. If you wanted to, you can go like this and you can make it curved. It's all up to you, okay? So right now you should have a flat coming off of your seven inch line. It should be a two inch flat. That's by four inches diagonal coming in, okay? And what you're gonna do to this side, you're gonna go back to the, we're gonna do to this side. So off of our 12 inch line, we got, we extended it two inches. Off the top of this two inch extension, we're going to add four inches. This should be simple. I'm sorry, guys. I, I got fabric. I'm going to do a fabric haul video. Um, it's a lot of fabric. So, I'm going to take this and, okay, we're going to extend this four inches. Like, if you guys are looking like your thing is not on four inches, mine is already cut out. So, I'm just trying to get the best angle for you guys. So we got this line right here. This is four inches. Okay. And then we're going to go on this side. Same thing. See guys, you see? I'm having a hard time with like the stuff on my table. But right here. We got that. We're going to extend this out four inches. Okay, that's four inches. And then we're just going to cross over. Remember I said whatever shape you want your purse tag to be. Just remember when you close, when you go to close your purse for the envelope clutch, whatever shape this is, that's where your closure is going to be. So you can have a point, you can do a curve, you can do a straight line like me, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we should have each side of our pattern should be done. So our pattern should be in the middle. You're going to draw a rectangle. 12 inches long by 7 inches tall. Boom, we did that. Then we're going to extend 2 inches off of each 12 inch line on each side. We did that. Then off the 2 inch lines that we extended off of the 12 inch lines, we're going to extend 4 inches out of each 2 inch line. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. And I'm going to try to do a good close up for you guys. And once we put this together, you'll understand. It should be laid out almost... To me, it reminds me almost like how a diaper looks, which is weird, but it's kind of like how a diaper looks with the tabs on the side and then you got the, the back and the front. So just think of a diaper. You should have like a diaper shape, okay? Okay, so now we're just going to do our two, two um, flaps, the bottom flap and the top flap. So what I'm going to do, let me move these washers out the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and we're going to extend out one inch and this is on the big flaps which is the top flap and the bottom end. we're only going to extend one inch remember for the side flaps we extended two inches for the bottom flap we're going to extend one one inch and we're going to do that to both sides so we're going to extend one inch we're going to extend another one inch So we should have off of our 12 inch line, I mean off of our 7 inch lines, we should have extended 1 inch on each side of our rectangle, okay? And then 1 inch above, okay? So off of our 7 inch line, we're extending 1 inch. So that's 1 inch. A 1 inch extension, 1 inch extension. So basically what we're forming right now, we should have some right angles going on right here. You see that? We got some right angles going on. See that? This is what's going to make our purse. This is what's going to make our purse close to keep our contents in there. So we did out one inch each time. And then off of that one inch, we're going to want to do the same thing that we did on this side. But we're going to extend instead of four inches, it's going to be five and a half inches. So we're going to take this to five and a half. 
And you want to angle it in. Like I said, angle it until you eyeball it, angle it. Because you want them to be the right, the same angle on each side. If you want it, I guess you probably could try to do this on the fold. But I think it's better just to draw it out. So five and a half inches. Out. So we just took our one inch from our one inch. We expanded five and a half inches. So five and a half inches out. And then what we did to that side, we're going to do this side. So this side. We're going to do five and a half inches out. And then, of course, we're going to do the same thing we did at first. Excuse my robe, people. It's in the way. I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to draw that straight line. I have to get used to, like, making videos on YouTube. Because sometimes when I'm sewing in the house, I'm all over the table. And I'm not used to, like, having to make sure that I am, you know, showing, you know, everything. Sorry. So, right now... This is five and a half inches, five and a half inches, five and a half inches, okay? So we just came out like this, five and a half inches to meet. So you guys should see this. And then down here, we're going to do the same thing. So you see, we came out on each side out of our rectangle. Here goes our seven inch line. This is my seven inch line right here, okay? Off of our seven inch line. Only thing I'm going to do when I get to that corner where you see where you made that two inch extension and where that seven inch line is, you're just going to extend that seven inch line one inch down. You can go to this seven inch line, extend it one inch out. Go up here to, to the, the top of the seven inch line, extend it one inch out. Go to the top of this seven inch line, extend it one inch out. I want you guys to understand what I'm doing because it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Okay. So we're just starting off rectangle 12 by seven inches, okay? Boom, we got that in the middle. Take this off the seven inch line. We're gonna extend one inch on each side of the seven inch line, okay? That's on both sides. Then off of our 12 inch line, we're gonna extend out two inches. That's on both sides of the 12 inch line. So you should have two inches coming out of the 12 inch line on each side, one inch coming out of your seven inch line on both sides, okay? We then extend it five and a half inches out of our one inch line until it meets up you can even meet them at a point or you can square it off and flatten it out like i did or you can round it out however you want the shape of your purse so down here off of our seven inch line i added one inch boom off that one inch line i'm gonna come and angle it in for the shape of my um my closure remember it's an envelope purse so we gotta get that envelope shape so what we did is what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna extend five and a half inches remember okay so we got five and a half inches, okay? Then right here off this one inch line, we got another five and a half inches. Extend it. Okay. And then down here, we're just squaring it off for them to meet. So that when it folds, you just basically, when you fold this, it's almost like origami. If, you, if you're not sure of the shape that I got, what I can tell you guys, the best thing you could do is get an envelope, okay? Regular envelope and take it apart. Take your time. Don't rip nothing. Take the envelope apart very carefully and lay that shape out on your table. That shape of when you open up that envelope is the shape that your purse should be. But, but besides, the um, regular envelope, of course, is going to be way skinnier than a purse. But that will give you an idea of the sides. And the only thing you have to do is just look at that envelope and then take the measurements that I gave you guys. And you can write it on the sides of the envelope and then draw one that's bigger to scale. That would probably really help you guys. So if you're not sure, like, oh, I don't understand what she said, extend this line out of this line, I'm confused. If that's you, get a regular envelope, regular white envelope that you can get from the dollar store. Literally open the envelope up. The way that that envelope opens up, that is the shape of the pocketbook. It's just that this pocketbook is a 12, is a 12 by 7 inch. You get what I'm saying? And the flaps are, um, the flaps are, the top and the bottom flaps is, five and a half inches and the side flaps are four inches so when you look at that when you go and you take apart your envelope from the store just write in those numbers whatever those lengths are on those sides change it to the 
to um, the measurements that I gave you guys, and you'll be perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut this out. So it just basically should be laid out, like I said, it should look somewhat like a diaper. Um, and I'm going to cut this out. Don't forget, like I said, you want to get you a pair, if you're new to sewing, definitely get you a pair of these Fisker Easy Action Scissors. These are really good. They help you cut even. And get these washers. They'll save you a lot of time. Because I remember when I first started sewing, I pinned everything down. Yeah, you could pin stuff down, but I would say this is so much easier because the washers are holding in place and you can cut immediately and be ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out our purse, our template. What I'm doing is I made this, but this is like different pieces of card stock stuck together. So I'm just going to make another um, copy of this. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm cutting on a fold, and I do not need to be cutting on a fold. Do not cut on a fold unless you have to. So I'm going to lift this piece up. I'm only going to cut one sheet because that's wasting. I don't need um, both sides. And you're just going to cut this out. And remember, do not make no changes. Once you cut your pattern out, Make sure that when you make this paper pattern before you cut it out in muslin or, you know, test it out, make sure that you are, um, that everything is good. Like, fold it while it's in paper form first and make sure that everything closes nicely so that before you cut your pattern out, you, didn't, you never want to make a pattern and then realize when you're sewing it together, okay, something's wrong. So, You'll change something, like you'll slice a piece off of the pattern, or you'll slice a piece of the fabric off. You always want to change whatever is wrong, change it in your pattern. Don't just change it in the purse. You want to change it in the pattern so that the next time you go to make it, everything is fixed already. You ain't got to worry about, okay, how did I get this? But remember, I'm not doing mine triangular. So I'm just going to lift this up and cut that. I'm going to go around here so you guys can see. Sorry guys, this is a really hard angle to cut at. Um, it really is. If you have um a tray, if you have um a rotary cutter, this would be the time it would come in handy as well. Rotary cutters are really good. Never cut like you see me cutting right now, guys. This is not good. I just did it because I'm trying not to be in the way of the camera as much. And I'm just going to go ahead and and we're just going around. We're cutting it. And make sure that you guys also note that when you go to fold the envelope purse together and sew it together, make sure that you know the side flaps get folded into each other first. And then the bottom flap gets folded over top of the two side flaps. Okay, and I'm still cutting this out. Like I said, yes, I have this card, um, this pattern, but this is a whole bunch of different pieces of paper out of my sketchbook that's like pinned together because I didn't have a sheet of paper that was big enough. Get creative. If you don't have a sheet of paper that's big enough, use newspaper. Newspapers are always wide. They're just really thin, so I tend to not like to use newspaper if I'm making something long term. Like a pattern that I feel like I'm going to be using over and over again. And then. I'm cutting down my little one inch. And I'm cutting up my little two inch size. I'm sorry guys. I'm knowing I'm probably in the way a little bit. I apologize. And I'm going to cut this one piece, guys. We'll be in business. Okay. So, as you can see, I cut my um, my piece out. Make sure I got everything. Always check before you lift it up, especially if you're not um, using a, if it's not pinned down. And then I just, look how easy this is. Instead of sitting here to take all the pins out. So, put my little washers over there. 
I'm going to lift this up. And this is what you guys should have. It should look something like this. Um, let me see, guys, if you can see that good. As you guys can see, we got our 12 by 7 inch rectangle. You see, this is where we extended it out two inches. Then we came up an angle four inches. But you see how I mean when I said it's a diaper? And what's going to happen is, once we have this, you're going to fold these sides in like this. That's the side of your purse. Then you're going to sew, sew, fold this side. Okay, that's your other side of your purse. These two pieces. Then you're going to take the bottom piece. You're going to fold that up, okay? You guys see how that is like a big envelope? You guys see that? It's a big envelope, see? And that's how you do it. This is the envelope purse. And you can you can use any type of fabric, really. If you want to use something thin, then I would say definitely you want to get you a nice, sturdy piece of interfacing. We've already went over interfacing on this channel. Um, if anybody is not sure what interfacing is, um, you can go to any local fabric store and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. But just for quick, quick mental note, Interfacing basically is like this. This is an extreme version of interfacing. I gotta find a better version because it would be very rare. There's not that many projects that cause for call for interfacing this thick unless you're making like a nice like thick purse or bag or something. But um I would say you can just get away with getting any type of vinyl fabric. Um, I'll say, and if you're wondering what vinyl fabric, something that's in a lot are clear purses. A lot of people like clear. This is something that I got at Walmart. I know it's backwards, guys. Sorry. But it says super clear vinyl covering. It's like nine bucks at Walmart. It's for like covering up, as you guys can see, like grills and, um, firewood and couches, whatever, you know. But if you guys look at this stuff, very thick, adorable. And, like, let me show you how one single sheet, how thick it is. And they come in different thicknesses, believe it or not. They come in, um, I believe that this one is, I believe that this, this type of vinyl is, like, the thickest one that they carry. They come medium and they come in light. But if you guys see how thick this one piece is, it's, like, that's really thick. You know? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this purse, as you guys can see, I'm going to make this purse my envelope clutch, see? This is the shape you should have, okay? So if you guys look, it looks just like any other envelope, it's just on a larger scale. So if you're not sure, you can get an envelope. If you want to make a little tiny one, then make one smaller like envelope um, and just extend the lines a little bit, you know, and make it a little bit wider. But this is what you would have. And then you see how I decided to leave mine flat across the top? If you want it, like I said, you could have rounded it. You could have pointed it. You could have did a swiggly line, a zigzag. It really doesn't matter. Whatever you want it. And then that will be your closure. And you will close it over like that. And I'm sorry, this is hard because it has pins in it to show you guys. But... This is how it would be closed. And then you would get you like a magnetic button right here. Magnetic button. Install that. Boom. Close it. It's done. And then you can either insert like a chain for right here. Or you could just do the regular under the arm clutch. But yeah. This is our pattern that we made. I'm going to let you guys try to get as much of it on there as possible. Um, but yeah. This is what we made. Our envelope clutch, remember sides get closed first, then you close the bottom, sew this together, and then you're going to add in your clip. Now, if you want to put in a lining, you want to put in your lining now. So, if you want to line it, you want to cut one of these in your outer fabric and cut one of these in your inner fabric, okay? And then you're going to sew them right sides together. You're going to leave like about a two inch hole. You're going to flip it right side out once you sew it. Do not sew it all the way closed. Leave a two inch hole. Sew all the way around with your, your lining fabric right side and your um, your outer purse fabric right sides together. Fold it all. Um, sew it all the way around. Leave two inches out. 
um, flip it right side out after you iron it. Ironing is very important. If you're using a fabric that you can iron, iron. If you're using something thick like a vinyl or like a, um, a faux leather or something like that, you might want to hammer it. Or if it's like getting too poofy and you're like feeling like your seams look bulky, you could take some clamps and like clamp it down and let it sit there for overnight. Um, or you can also use a blow dryer because blow dryers are good with like loosening up this type of stuff. Just not, don't burn a hole in it. But if you're just starting out, you should be perfectly happy with your purse. Like I doubt if you're going to hate it. It may be a little bit puffy, but if that's the case, you start off, use a medium weight vinyl. Don't use a super bulky one. If you don't have, say if you're using a sewing machine and you're not sure, um, if your machine, how good is going to work. Um, you're going to want to, um, do it on a cheaper fabric first, test it out, putting it together. Always test out your design before you waste your fashion fabric. I'm going to show you guys. It's so hard to see this on my white table. Let me see if I can lay a piece of fabric down so you guys can see better, Okay. So I'm going to lay this pink fabric out so you guys can see better. This is the pattern that I cut out. I'm trying to see. Like, oh, how do I show that? Sorry, guys. This is just like, this angle is just so weird for me. This is what you guys see, which is the same as this that I will lay out for you guys to for you guys to see that. Because I think you can probably see it better with this. But this is what you should have. I'm like, I love these. Just look how fast it made that. Okay. This is the shape that you should have. Let me make sure. Okay. So this is the shape that you guys should have. And this is a, um, as you guys can see, this is like an upholstery fabric. Um, I'm not, I will not, I'm not going to be making um, this purse, this clutch out of this fabric. I just did that. So you guys could actually see the shape. But now, as you guys can see, we have a little envelope clutch. It's absolutely adorable. I, I'm going to show you guys one more time how you're going to put this together. You're going to fold in the side. You're going to fold in that other side, okay? Don't be, don't panic if they don't meet in the middle. Mine doesn't meet in the middle. Now, if you want it, be my guess. You can extend it if you, if you feel like, okay, it'll make flat. It's going to be what is the most important thing. And you want to make sure that when you fold up your bottom flat, that it's coming across the top too, like these two pieces. Because you want a clean, smooth thing, okay? And then this will be your envelope purse. There goes your little closure. Boom, you close it, you open it. And if you wanted to add, like, say, a strap, before you add your um, lining, I would say sew the strap in. Then sew your lining around, flip it right side out. Do it that way so that your strap is, like, embedded under the lining. It'll make it, get it a cleaner look. And if you're not going to do a... Um, lining, that's fine. A lot of vinyl fabrics are very strong. The vinyl is more for aesthetic purposes. Um, you can still have a very clean finish, and I'm going to show you guys how. If you want to do one of these clutches without the lining, you're going to need to use a French seam. Anybody who um, has a little bit of, of um, sewing knowledge or has taken a sewing class or two, a French seam is something that is very... Um, it's a very, very neat seam. It's a way of finishing edges um, very neatly. But they can be a little bulky when you're using bulky fabric. So you want to keep that in mind. So um, you might want to trim down some of that seam, um, some of your seam allowance before you do the French seam. But I'm going to give you guys a quick um, thing, a lesson on what a French seam is. So basically what a French seam is, 
Uh, let me get a small piece of fabric to demonstrate this. Mm. Guys, I'm trying to find a scrap piece of fabric real quick. Give me a second. Like, it's crazy. I have all this fabric, but I love it. So even my strap, my scrap pieces, I'm like, you know, let me find a piece that's really like, what can I do with this? Because I don't want to use a piece that can actually be used for something good. Okay. I got a piece of black so you guys can see. Show you guys. So right here we have, I just got a piece of, let me move this out the way real quick. But, um piece of fabric. I'm going to show you guys what a French seam is. If you want to just say you just want to make this purse and you want it to be clean in the inside, you don't have, um, I don't know, you don't want to take the time to do the fold over and all of that. I get it. So, Guys, don't mind my cutting. I don't know what this is. This is like a piece of like scrap lining or something. So, so we have these two pieces of fabric, as you guys can see. So say, okay, we're um, making, I don't know, like say we're just sewing two seams together, period. You're making anything, you got to sew your two seams together, and you want to do a French seam. It's very simple. I wish I would have found a fabric that had a right and a wrong side. I wasn't even thinking of that, guys. Sorry. But this is going to be our, our right um our right side. So what you do for a French seam, you're going to take your wrong sides. French seam is very different. You're going to take your wrong sides and you're going to put those together. So for a French seam, I'm going to take my wrong side and my wrong, I mean my yeah, my wrong side and my wrong side. You know, usually when you sew, you do right sides together. But for a French seam, you're going to do wrong sides together. So your, your fashion fabric should be showing on the outside. And you're going to pinch this off. Add some pins. Show you guys real quick. We're just going to take this down. And you see that? Of course, you're just going to go down your seam like you would. Say if you're showing it. But this is already a lot of people mess up on this part because you're like taught to sew right sides together. But when it's a French seam, you're going to sew um, with your wrong side together. So now you see I got that. Remember, this is my right side. Let me see if I have something to write on there with. Okay. So we're going to do... That this is our right side. I'm going to write wrong. Okay. So you guys see right here? This is our right side of fabric. Okay? The right side. Which is weird. I get it. But we're going to sew. So here go our seam right here. We got our fabric. We have it right sides, um, wrong sides together. You see, it's hard for me to say that. Wrong sides together. We're going to go here. We're going to stitch all the way down. This is do a French seam, okay? Okay. So give me one second, guys. I'm going to run over to this machine. I'm going to stitch this line real quick. And show you guys real quick how to do a French seam. This will help you guys really um, be able to make some professional looking stuff, okay? So, so I'm just going to sew my, my fabrics. I got them right sides together. I mean, wrong sides together, guys. I'm so sorry. Don't forget the back stitch. That's very important. So I did that, guys, and I sewed that. So you see now I have stitched it. 
You guys see that on my right sides, I stitched straight down my seam allowance. So for the French seam, the next thing that we're going to do, okay, stitch down. This is the right side of our fabric, so we're going to open it up. So our seam, the, the, clean, the clean edge of our seam, as you can see once I sewed it together, it should be on the wrong side. Okay, wrong side. You see, that's my seam on the wrong side. So what a French seam is, is that, okay, so you sewed your fabrics together, wrong sides together. You're going to open it up, and you're going to take where that seam is with this access flipping up, like this access that's right here. And you're going to fold that over. Now, if you're dealing with something bulky, you might want to trim some of that seam allowance. But you're going to flip that over and you're going to fold this down where your right sides together, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to sandwich this seam allowance back in. So you're going to fold this over so where you got your little clean edge right here, guys, you're going to fold that over. And you're going to go back down and you're going to pin this. As you guys can see, I'm going back down. You see, this is the wrong side now. So I sewed my two pieces of fabric together with the wrong sides facing each other. And now I'm going to have it nice and tight. You can iron this. would be really good to iron as well. And I'm going to go back over where I did this. So this is what you got, okay? This is um, your French seam so far. And then you're going to go, and where you got that seam allowance that was sticking out, you're probably wondering, why did we sew it um, with the wrong sides together? Because now my, my um, seam allowance is going to be showing on the right side of my fabric. It's not, because what you do with a French seam is you fold it back over. So now I got the wrong side exposed, and I got this little seam what we're going to do is we're going to enclose that raw edge. So you're going to go back down and you're going to come back out your seam allowance. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. And you want to make sure that you have that encased in there. Of course, my thing wants to, um, the piece of thread wants to come out. Guys, I'm sorry. But I just want to so, show you guys the beauty of this um, this French seam. There's a lot of YouTube videos that explain the French seam. But basically a French seam, to, to sum it all up, is you're going to sew wrong side. You're, you're going to take both your pieces of fabric. You're going to sew them with wrong sides together. Then once you're done sewing them wrong sides together, you want to flip them so your seam, so your seam allowance is in the inside. You're going to iron that flat, and then you're going to go back over that seam, enclosing and encasing that seam allowance in. So I'm just going to go real quick. For video purposes, I'm not backstitching, but I'm going to show you guys real quick how to do this French seam. And it's going to make your guys, your stuff is going to look really, really professional. Um, it's something that you can do. Oh, uh, of course. Okay, I ran out of... Um, guys, I'm sorry. I ran out, of course, of things. So basically what you do is, once you do that, you have it sewn together. When you flip this right sides out, this part, you see that where that stitching is for the French seam? When you encase that in, when you flip that right side out, this is how it will come. It will come out like this. The French seam will come out like this. Your, your seam will be enclosed inside of it. I'm sorry, I don't want to, I think that's kind of rude to do a lot of stuff off camera, so 
Um, I would get the bobbin and then re-thread and all that, but I don't want to do that because take away from the video. So, like I said, that's how you can do with that. You can just do no, if you want to make the envelope clutch, you can make the envelope clutch without using the line. And just remember, try to use a French seam um, when you're sewing, especially if you're going to sew like beach bags, French seams are really good. Um, for this type of bag, I really don't think you would need a French seam because this is a one piece bag. You get what I'm saying? There are no seams really. So, um, I don't think the French seam would really work on this bag, but for that beach bag, I was going to show you guys. Um, yeah, I still haven't showed you guys the beach bag because a lot of people wanted to know how to make an envelope clutch bag over the beach bag. I'm thinking because we're not in the summer um, seasons right now. So people are, are more interested in what can they wear and utilize now. I get it. So people wanted the clutch. Showed you guys the clutch. I was trying to work you guys up to the clutch because the clutch is a little bit more um, lines, a little bit more um in depth than the beach bag are they both are pretty much simple so what we're going to do is we're going to cut our fabric so let's do that so i'm going to take this gorgeous fabric and guys i want to also tell you about how important it is to sketch your designs um, last night I was up and what you want to do is you want to cut swatches of all your fabrics so I'll show you guys I don't show you all of my designs but these are some of the fabrics that I got to make beach bags and bag wear and I'll show you like two or three of them but you guys see it's like something simple a little simple drawing get good um make sure you have good art supplies because you want to be able to render as close as possible I tried to render as close as possible Okay, so right now I am going to do my beautiful gold, as you guys can see. Got this from Walmart. It's like 30 bucks. natural cork that's what it's called and when you go to stores and stuff like if you go to walmart this is what they'll give you keep this like put it somewhere in your journal so that you can remember you want to remember what fabrics that you're buying so that if you ever have somebody say oh i love that i want you to make that for me you have an idea so what i'll do is i'll put it just somewhere in the back of my sketchbook or something in the back one of my pages of my sketchbook and just put that here you know Always keep track of what you're using. Because who knows, you could be that could be your number one seller one day and you don't have a way of um don't of making it. So I love this fabric as you guys can see. It has um it's called natural cork and it has like this beautiful gold shimmer. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's it's nowhere near as thick now. If you want it. You could double this up if you want it, like double it, but it's so beautiful. Why waste this fabric, even though it was $8 a yard, which is reasonable. Um, you could double it, and then you would have the inside and outside exactly the same. Or you can use um, interfacing, like I have, which is this very thick interfacing, which, is, which I am probably going to use. And let's get the cutting, guys. Remember I say don't cut, measure twice, cut once. That's that's what you'll learn if you're in design school. And so that's what I'm going to do. If you're cutting out, like I said, I'm going to be doing a, a interfacing as well as I'm probably going to need a lining because this is kind of thin. I want a very sturdy purse. As you guys can see, it just went right in the floor. Do not be like me and just let your stuff roll off into the floor like that. Please don't. Respect your fabric. And then I have, of course, my washers. They come in handy. I have my interfacing. 
you want to cut this out in two layers. So I have my fashion fabric and I have my interfacing or whatever you're going to be using. If this is not sturdy enough for your liking, you want, and you see this is like very, very thick. And you want to line this up. Do you need pens? If you're just beginning, I would say you can use pens, but pens tend to leave holes when you're, um, pens tend to leave holes. Oh, I can't talk. When you're, um, using like a thick fabrics or like vinyl, it'll leave holes in your fabric. If you don't care, like say, if you're like, oh, I'm going to decorate it anyway, it's going to be decorated over top of it, then, okay. So right now I have my fashion fabric. Oh my gosh. Right now, guys. Sorry, people. I'm trying to get a better angle for you guys. So right now I have my um, interfacing if your fabric is going to stick to your liking and then I have my fashion fabric and I have those lined up and I want a lining in the inside because of course um, we need a lining. Oh, guys, I'm trying to find this one light lining that I've had. Um, it was a gold light a lining. I keep saying lighting. I don't understand why I keep saying lighting. Maybe it's because um, I'm just was looking at the light. Who knows? I'm trying to find there. I believe I have there's a golden lining. Um, you can really use, um, any type of fabric you really want. I would say a good thing to use is waterproof fabric for linings because of the waterproof, of course. Um, I do not see my lining, which is discouraging to me. Um, you know what? I think I just found it, guys. One second. We're going to get this together. This video went way longer than I thought, but when you're making something, I want to make sure that you guys are with me every step of the way, okay? Here goes some lining that I found. Do you never have your lining like this. This was balled up in like a tote that I've had for years. As you can see, it's been like butchered, okay? But this will work. So I need to find a piece, hopefully that's wide enough, because you want to cut your lining in one piece. I don't know if this lining is going to work. I don't know. Only thing I can do is just hope. Put this on here. And you want to make sure that it's like... This is a really wrinkly piece of lining. But um, I'll probably cut this first because I just want to see if it's going to fit. I'm not sure if it's going to fit before I go through the process of steaming it and ironing it. Because you want to have it as close as possible. So I have three layers. I have the layer of my fashion fabric, the layer of my um, um, fashion fabric is the first layer. The second layer, fashion fabric is the first layer. The second layer is my interfacing. The third layer is my lining. And this is to make my, make my envelope clutch. Now, like I said, you guys don't need to do all of that. Like, you're perfectly fine. If you're perfectly okay um, not lining it, then don't line it. You don't need to. But I would say if you're going to be trying to sell it, line it. You'll, it'll be way easier to sell. I'm just saying. As, as you can make it as... I always say if you're going to sell stuff, you want to get it as close to in the store as possible. So this might be big enough. I'm not sure until I test this out. So I'm going to put these washers on here around here my teacher would be flipping out right now she's seen all these wrinkles but this is just for the lining of my purse 
So if this was clothing, you would never ever want to cut anything like this. If this was clothing. The line you can always be trimmed. Okay. Guys, I don't know if it's wide enough. Mm, let's see. So, guys, I'm not sure if this is going to be big enough. I don't know how I'm going to cut this. You know what? Okay, I see it. I'm going to have to move this up because it's a little too long. So, we have this laid out. And, like, take your time with your placement. Don't just be so excited. Like, yes, I'm making my purse and you cut it out wrong. Take your time and, be, and like... Make sure and play around with it. That's one thing you can do. Play around with it and you can get it and get it to fit, you know. So I didn't play around with mine. And I think I got it. Because I got everything. And you want to try not to waste a lot of fabric. That's why I'm like down here trying to play it as close as I can. Because I don't want it taken off as more space than I need it to you know remember that don't just go all happy go lucky and cut because you might have something left over to make something else so I got that one everything is nice and laid down okay so we got all of this stuff cut and then you want to do a quick peel up to make sure everything lined up. Everything has a piece of something under it. Okay. And. So I have my three layers. I have my, my fashion fabric, which is the outer of my purse. I have my interfacing, which is going to give my purse that st um, stability that I want and that strength. And then I have my line, which is going to make my purse look beautiful on the inside. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut. Now, take your time. Be accurate. Take your time. If somebody's talking to you or something, tell them, leave me alone for a second. I'm doing something. You want to get this cut out well. And you don't want to move nothing around, okay? So if you're just beginning, sink some pins in there. Even though, or use clamps. These spring action scissors are very, you want to get them up underneath there. They're very sturdy. And we're just going to cut through this. Okay. And cut through these layers. And these scissors are very strong. You see that how like beautiful that cut? Now I'm cutting weird guys because I'm I'm taking into consideration the angle um that I am on the camera. So I want to make sure I'm not blocking you guys. Um, vision from seeing what I'm doing. And you see him just back underneath of it. Like you guys can be designers and I believe in all of you guys. And um, if nobody has told you guys that they believe in you, I do. You guys can do this. Feel free if you have any questions, any problems, leave them in the comments. And I swear, guys, I'm going to read those comments and I'm going to try to answer all you guys. I really am. Because I know how, 
how frustrating it can be when you have a question about something and you just can't seem to get in contact with that person and you're like, oh, I know how to do everything else. It's just this one piece. I get it. Okay. So I'm trying to get around this bin without blocking the screen, guys. I'm getting up in there. Be very careful. Like, if you got to cut it in a weird position, I don't care if you got to climb on top of the table. Get it right. Get it straight. You don't want to have any problems. And I'm still just cutting this out, guys. You see, I'm taking my time. If you have a rotary cutter, like I said, that that probably be a lot easier going around these these um things. But just take your time, people. Remember your placement. Watch. Don't cut any piece that's unnecessary because everything could be used. Like I'm gonna be adding tassels to my purse. So, I can make the tassels out of this um, scrap fabric. Down our little two-inch line. I mean, a one-inch line, guys. Sorry. E, try to get this out. Did I get it? Okay, there it go, right here. Okay. You gotta get up in there. And... It's very thick, so that's why I had to put my hand up. And so this, guys, we have cut it out. And this is the fun part when you actually see. It come to life because um, I drew out a lot of my designs and did like a little mini purse collection of, um, last night. And it's always good. Draw out your designs, guys. Don't just go in your fashion room or go say, oh, I'm going to make some purse. No, draw them out. Have a concept. Tell a story. You get what I'm saying? So that um, you will be, especially if you want to try to sell this stuff, you know, you want to be able to tell somebody, look, here goes the drawings. I incorporated this to go with this. These are the fabric swatches. You have those. Like I have the swatches on top of my book. And as you guys see, we have a cutout. So we're going to take all of our washes off. I have my fabrics. Now... This is probably good to say, I'm going to iron this. So I'm going to go over here to my iron, guys. And um, you probably would just use a little bit of steam. Um, these type of fabrics can be, um, a lot of lining fabrics are heat sensitive. So remember that. Always do a test out on a scrap piece of fabric. And as you guys can see, I have this left, right? This is just like a piece of scrap. So I'm going to make me a cute little tassel, you know, or two or three. Sometimes I'm extra. I don't know. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, in another video. Um, that's very easy. But I'm trying to make, you know, some of these videos not so long. And so I have my little iron. Do not iron on a table like this. It's just that I have an ironing board and everything, an ironing station. It's just that I don't want to keep leaving you guys. Um, and I'm just going to iron out all of these. And once again, this also, I may say, this is sewing interfacing that I'm using. This is not um, the glue interfacing with the glue dots. Just let you guys know that. I just want to even this out it's very and you guys see you just don't want to leave too much heat on it but 
guys can see. So I have this. And it slid a little bit, but it's okay. We're just going to pull them pieces back. And I just want to go like this. Um, I do have a steamer, but like this is the quickest thing. I have a stand-up steamer. It's good. Invest in a stand-up steamer and a thing. So we have all of our pieces. So I'm going to give you guys a quick thing, and then we're going to sew this together. So this is our purse as we have it. We have to do our sewing together. Like I said, you can use clips. I believe I have some clips. Um, they have clips. They come on. They have them on Amazon. They come in like this big thing. Um, but of course, but they look like this. This they come in like different. I think I had like mine came with like two hundred and something of them. Um, and you see the different size I was talking about. They have like some little baby ones too. They're really good. I probably have to order some more off of Amazon because I had a fashion show at my school and I had to do a lot of alterations because I found like a lot of my models like right before the fashion show. So a lot of my stuff was pre-made. So I had to just find, it was like Cinderella finding the person that could fit um, that. So, and I say, just clip these. You wanna hold your pieces together. Cause these was cut together. They were ironed together. You want to keep them together. It's like a family. You want to keep this family together. You don't want them to get separated. You don't want them to move around, really, because you want to keep them together. And you can put as many as little as you want. I'm just putting mine in the key areas where they may slide out of place. You know. So, yeah. So this is what we should have, guys. We have our purse, our envelope clutch. This is the design that I chose to do mine in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it to the machine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew this baby all the way around. Show it all around. Now another quick tip spray that basting spray that i told you guys all about this is slippery it does move around you can base this in place and actually i think that's what i'm going to do base these pieces in place so that they will stick and they will not go anywhere so i'll show you guys how to do that so i got my basting spray my dritz basting spray and what i'm going to do is first of all make sure that okay this is good. I like the placement. Everything's great. Okay, cool. Now, and I get that you can also, I know people say the lining, you want to do right sides together, and then you want to peel them out. But when you're dealing with something like cardboard like this, that's going to be really hard to turn that right side out. So what I would say to do is to leave it like this, baste it, sew it all the way around. And what you're going to do is you're just going to want to like fold in your edges and make it nice and neat or find a way to finish those edges at, at the end. So I'm going to start this bottom. And we're just going to base all of our pieces together, guys. Simple, 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 simple. So I'm going to see. I'm going to lift this up. And we just base that together. Simple. you want to smooth this out look at that nice and smooth get these lines out and you see how beautiful and flat that is and then you want to put your clips back in don't leave your clips out because you got to still give it a little bit of time to dry
I mean, you just like a pizza. You want to spin it. <laughs> Same to this side. Take those out. Lift my one layer. Two layer. Take this. Boom is in there. Nice and stuck down. Temporary. It's called a temporary adhesive. And you just want to. And the good thing is temporary. So like say if you stick it a little bit wrong. You can just peel it up. And all of this is washable. It washes right out. Or you could just leave it in there. Because I know you're probably like, Wait, am I supposed to throw my purse in the washing machine? No, you don't have to. The glue is perfectly fine. You can just let it dry. You guys can see I did that side. Look how beautiful that is. Sorry guys, this video is kind of long. But I wanted to make sure that I hit every step. Twist this around. Do this side. Take your time, guys. Take your time. And I'm just spraying this basting spray into. I gotta hear it. My phone's dying. It's gonna die. Into this. Get that down there. Then you wanna take this. Remember, you goes to be spraying like 12 inches away. I'm sitting down. But yeah, and you want to, you don't want no no wrinkles. You get a wrinkle, you want to lift that up. And the good thing is by being like good, you can kind of get those wrinkles out. So let me put these clamps back in, guys. Okay, guys. Last side. This is our last side. So, wow. It will be a little sticky, guys. So, you want to work on a surface that wear gloves, like I say, because no matter how much I try to pinpoint this thing, it's like virtually impossible to get any type of like accuracy with this thing. It sprays glue everywhere. And I'll just put this out. And you want to Yeah, see I got a tiny bit of wrinkle, but that's okay. And you guys see it's completely covered. And then what you can do is, uh, you know those paint scraper things, if you have one of those that you clear, like to put on wallpaper, that would be really good for this. Or like something like this. I have like a pack of this bias tape. And I'm just going to go like this with the bias tape. Over it. Just to try to clean it up. You don't need to spray it real thick, guys. In Make sure that you're lifting it up too because you don't want to glue it to your table. Mine already feels like it's somewhat glued to the table a little bit, but. And see, I'm just going to try to smooth that out. You want to smooth out as much as you can. And this is just going to give it a nice, get that glue to really attach because you don't want this to slide around while you're sewing. Okay, guys, so right now we have our purse. Right now we have the interfacing. We have um, our fashion fabric with our interfacion sandwiched in between the fashion fabric and the lining. This is the purse. Um, this is what I chose to make the purse out of. As you can see now, it's like real sturdy with that interfacing. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around and we're going to sew all the way around. All the way around, all the way around this whole thing, guys. Um, should be relatively um an easy sew. We're just gonna like start somewhere 
and so all the way around this edge I'd say maybe a quarter of an inch you just want to make sure that you're catching every single layer so if you if your cutting was a little bit crooked then you might gotta take it in a little bit more than um you might gotta make your seam allowance a little bit bigger than a fourth inch but you really don't want big seam allowance because this is thick it's gonna be really really bulky and you're gonna make sure you want to sew with a denim needle or a heavy duty needle that's for like um denim or leather or something like that okay and mark it because you want to sew this once this type of fabric and making something with this sturdy it's hard what we're going to do we're just going to sew all the way around and we'll come back we'll be done and then we're going to sew these put these sides together we're going to put this bottom together you get what i'm saying look how cute this guys look how cute that's going to be so i'm going to um probably have to upload a part two to this video guys um, because my phone is about to die, so I got to throw in the charger. But I have, I will be uploading um, part two. So don't be like, oh my god, I didn't get the finish. No, you, they, it's done. If you fall all of my steps, it's done. So all the way around. Remember, you start with your two flaps. Close these two flaps. Close this bottom flap. Sew these together. Now you might want to hand sew it. You could tack it. You can glue it. We'll get into different ways of that. And then you just decorate. So. You're done, and now you just fold the sides, fold that, and you're good. So, I'll get back with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching Trendy DIY 29. And make sure that you like, you share, and you subscribe. Um, and let me know any DIYs that you guys want to see. We did the envelope clutch. I will be posting.